We got quite a bit of honors chemistry to talk about today. 4.9 and 4.10 have to be discussed. Obviously, I can't tell you anything about 4.10 before we get into 4.9. And 4.9 is actually going to be a critical lesson to kind of jump off of. And then we can get into 4.10. 4.11 will be 4.10, except more complicated. That's why I'm going to say that. I do have to show you my copy because there are important notes on here. So, S has less energy than P, P has less energy than D, and D has less energy than F. That's how sublevels follow the rule. The off bow principle is a German for Brit for building up, electrons must occupy the lowest possible energy states available. There's a method to determine it, and it's the line rule. And you go up and down. So you have 1s, 2s, 2p, so on and so forth. So once the hour ends, you go to the bottom of this one and repeat. The lines should be more parallel. I just suck at drawing parallel lines. But, like, in, the in theory, if they were to go on forever, they should never cross. And, and you know, if I was okay at drawing, so when you look at it, you have... 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, but then 4s does become come before 3d, and you'll see this on on the thing. Um, then you have 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p in terms of energy. In terms of electrons, two will always have um, s will always have two p six. D10 and F14 because it's double the amount of electron pairs needed for the atom. Remember the SPDF? Yeah, it's important. And if you add up all these numbers, you're going to get to 118. 118 is the, um, is the number, is the atomic number of the highest confirmed element. The highest confirmed element has 118 electrons. So if you ever have to like write out the formula for 118, it's actually not that bad because you just include everything. But you do have to memorize, like, pretty much all of this. So, I am going to absolutely love having to memorize that, but I have time. And you can see the bit of the overlap here early on as 3D has um, more energy than 4S. Because as you break up into sublevels, as they get closer together in terms of energy, and as the sublevel break apart to get more intense... That's why there's the the overlap there. That's why 4S is less than 3D. And this beautiful, colorful array will show even more vivid overlap of colors and really pivots the point of where you need to have this cleared out because otherwise you will not be able to keep everything straight. You'll also have these things at the top. Um... These are not exponents, but rather they are the um, some kind of number, and it, it's how many electrons you have. And again, this is always going to be double the amount of um, double the amount of electrons that you have in in uh, in, in 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 a set. So. That's why when I told you about that odd number principle of square roots and how you get to the 2n squared, because you get the n squared by adding up the odd numbers. That amount of odd numbers you add up it is the square root of the sum in the end. And then when you multiply it by 2, that, that's how we get 2n squared. And, and remember the principle that I told you about that I couldn't tell you about why these elements begin to fill up other shells before completing the old ones? This is literally, literally the reason why. Now, I'm sure, now I have other questions about this, and this is going to question my whole knowledge of what a noble gas actually is. But this is why elements move on to the next shell before completing the original one. This is the chemistry behind it. It, it really is. And as much as it makes no sense to me, Right now, um, as it makes no sense to me right now, 
I'm pretty sure that this will eventually begin to um to boil down, and I'm pretty sure that as you get deeper into the year and I can make more videos, my understanding of noble gases, we're probably gonna have a noble gas unit, so I'll probably be able to update you further along as to well what the how this changes our understanding of noble gases. So I wouldn't try to worry too much about noble gases, but the Back a few videos back, I told you about the cliffhanger. I think it was in a 4.5, 4.6 video. Well, here's your answer, and I hope that you're happy. And if you want more, I can't give it to you. And that, you're going to have to wait for a few months to get. That, I would not hold your breath that you're going to get an answer to it anytime soon. 4.10 is where we kind of put our four, knowledge of 4.9 to the test. It's level one of, of electron configurations. Why is it level one? Because we don't go up to 4S and 3D where you have that separate thing. That we will be talking about either tomorrow or over the weekend, although I'll be unavailable the entire day Saturday. So if a video is not out on Friday, you're going to have to wait until Sunday to see the video. Um, so, I should, so I'll try to get it out on Friday. So this would be, again, the electron configuration number 1S2. Because you have one and then uh, for the S energy level and two, and that would be the one, the notation of helium. So hydrogen would be one S one, helium is one S two, and you have the up hours and the down hours for the box. Um, I did. I think that there's some notes I forgot. Yes, the rules for an electron configuration. My bad. So always assume the atom is in the ground state. It's the most stable and lowest energy level. Each electron enters the lowest energy orbital of the lowest shell available. No more, no more than two electrons in each orbital. And per Hund's rule, before a second electron can be placed in any orbital, all the orbitals of that cell level must contain at least one electron. So for carbon, you'd have up and then up, but you wouldn't have a down. And you'd have one blank and then two with only one electron in it. That would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Neon would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and that would be complete. This would be of magnesium because it's a 3s, and it can only hold 2. That's why you do have the down arrow, but for phosphorus, you, it's, it's 3 ups at the end for the 3p. That's the rules of doing it, is that you have to have it be in that specific order. And even if it wouldn't make a difference, I would still highly recommend that you follow Hun's rule anyway because you don't want to get yourself into a bad habit of not following Hun's rule and then you'll be in a tricky situation because then you will put the incorrect amount of down arrows and in most situations it will matter and it's going to be highly consequential because that's going to be one of the few things teachers are grading on a test it's going to be one of the few things that you'll be getting points taken off of if you make this mistake it's not me trying to scare you but it kind of is because this is a very serious thing and you probably will lose one to two points on a test if you do this and considering how many times you come on a test if you see this four times on a test and you probably lost six points just there about so uh just be careful about this